Uh, thank you. Um, good afternoon and welcome to the GCSE 2012 reforms going linear. This is information that's specifically um, designed to take you through the changes for GCSE Arabic, GCSE Greek, GCSE Japanese and GCSE Russian. Um, First of all, I'd like to uh, begin with a series of generic slides. Now, these slides will consider the impact of the changes for GCSE 2012 linear and how they will impact on first teaching from September 2012. Later on in the session, my f the focus will be on GCSE Arabic, Greek, Japanese and Russian specific slides, which hopefully, as there are less changes for languages than in other subject areas, you will find useful and hopefully reassuring. At the end of the session, as John mentioned earlier, there will be opportunities for you to type in questions that relate to these GCSE reforms. OK, let's move on then and have a look at the, the first slide. What are the GCSE reforms? Well, the first bullet is clearly the very, a, a very crucial one. Um, and essentially, it's to make all the GCSE assessment linear in structure so that the examinations are taken at the end of the course. So at the moment we have the situation where the GCSEs are currently unitized or modular, which means that students can, for example, do maybe a unit in listening or reading in year 10 and then perhaps do additional units in year 11. Going forwards with the new linear structure all of the exams will have to take place at the end of the GCSE course. So that's essentially what the changes are all about. If we look at the second bullet, you can see that uh, this is going to impact on students who start a GCSE course over two years from September 2012. But bearing in mind that the curriculum is delivered much more flexibly now, there are some students who may be embarking on three-year GCSE courses, maybe who've already started in September of 2011. In this case, uh, those uh, students will also be affected by these changes because it really has an impact on all assessment in summer 2014. OK, the third bullet isn't really applicable um, to uh, language GCSEs because it really relates to English language um, additional marks for spelling, punctuation and grammar and they, they really affect a limited number of GCSE subjects so that's not really one for our uh, attention. If we look at the next bullet, um, units cannot be resat before cash-in. In other words, if a student wants to do a GCSE qualification in Japanese, Arabic, Russian or Greek, um, they have to sit all four units together at the end of their GCSE course. Um, and they, they can't sit individual units here and there and then put them together right at the end, as they can do currently. Examinations uh, will only be available in the summer series. Well, for, for these particular GCSEs, there's no change there. Unlike some of the other languages, there are no January sessions for, for these particular languages. Controlled assessments, again, don't apply to, to Russian, Japanese, Greek or Arabic. So really, again, that doesn't affect you. Um, but uh, if you are teaching other languages where there are controlled assessments, it's useful for you, for you to know that controlled assessments can be conducted at any time, but they will, going forwards, have to be submitted for marking or moderation at the end of the course. There will be no interim moderation or marking opportunities. OK, so that's the, the first slide. Let's have a look at the next one. Right, you can see that there is a great deal of information on this particular slide. And to be honest, I'm going to bypass this slide because it relates to 
all GCSEs, including maths, including science and so forth. And you will notice that there are assessment opportunities there in November and March that simply don't exist for any language GCSE qualification. However, it is a very useful reference point, both for you and maybe other colleagues in your centre. And uh, you may wish to look at that at your leisure. I have prepared a languages specific uh, off-qual timeline uh, that we will look at later during the presentation. Um, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, the key message, uh, and I think this is particularly the case for these particular languages, uh, is the fact that the changes to the specifications are extremely minimal. Um, the DFE, the Department for Education GCSE 12 reforms, are really all about when. They're not really about how or what. So, so let's have a look then at the first bullet point that we have on this slide. Okay, that relates to the spelling, punctuation and grammar doesn't relate to um, to these particular languages but the key the key um, message in this particular slide uh, is that there are no plans to change the subject content of our specifications so there is there are no changes the same themes the same topic areas the same assessment criteria that you have in the current specification will still apply there will be the same assessment weightings nothing has really changed other than the timings uh, of the assessments in that you can only do all of the assessments at the end of the GCSE course. So the message there is that it's very much to do with the when, not the how, not the what. There are no plans to change subject content. Okay, the second bullet simply re refers to the fact that um, candidates will have to take all of the assessments at the end. So just reiterating the message from, from earlier. This clearly assumes uh, a two-year GCSE program starting from September 2012 affecting summer 2014 awarding or obviously if a three-year program is taken uh, from 2011 and again affecting summer 2014 awarding. It may well be that some of your students are undertaking their GCSE courses very intensively. Maybe they're doing a one-year uh, GCSE program. If that is the case and they're starting a one-year program from summer 2012, then they will not be affected by these changes because they will undertake their GCSE in 2013. However, if they're starting a one-year intensive course from September 2013, then they will be affected by the linear changes. Okay, the final bullet on this slide just refers to the fact that all of the assessments will be uh, in the summer, and that's no change really uh, for these particular GCSEs. Okay, next slide. I've already stated that the spelling, punctuation and grammar uh, modifications will only affect certain GCSEs. They will in fact be uh, English Literature, Geography, History and Religious Studies. Uh, and they only refer to English language um, spelling, grammar and punctuation. But I think uh, it's probably a useful opportunity for me to reassure you at this stage, as you would expect, uh, that there still will be marks applied for knowledge and application of language and indeed the range of language and of course accuracy in language, the target language, Japanese, Arabic, Greek and Russian. Uh, for the writing and speaking units and this application of marks will of course still be in line with the existing, as existing assessment criteria that you currently have in your specification. Okay, let's move on then to the next slide.
OK, remember that these are generic slides, so the first bullet here refers to the fact that there are no changes to controlled assessment content. Clearly, that doesn't apply to any of these four GCSEs, but it's useful for your general information. Again, if you have colleagues or if you're also teaching another language that involves controlled assessments, you may be interested to know that you can take the controlled undertake the controlled assessments with your students when they are ready. That may well be uh, in year 10, it may well be in November of year 11, or whenever it may be. And the controlled assessments um, can be um, taken as many times as appropriate uh, to, to the needs of your students. So although two controlled assessments are required, both for speaking and writing, you may undertake three or four and then submit the marks or the work for the best two. But as I say, controlled assessments do not relate um, to uh, Arabic, Japanese, Greek um, or Russian GCSE specifications. That's there for your general information. OK, again, controlled assessment unit results can be carry f carried forward in any qualification resit. Now, clearly, that doesn't apply uh, to these four languages. So if a candidate, for example, undertakes a GCSE in 2014, and they don't get the result that they, they had anticipated and want to get a better result, then they would need to resit the, the whole qualification the following year. There will be no opportunities for individual unit resits. OK. Let's move on then to the next slide. OK. This, uh, again, relates to, to resits. Um, candidates will not be allowed to carry forward unit results from one examiner, examination series to another. Uh, for example, you may currently have candidates that do listening and reading in year 10, and uh, then perhaps do their speaking and writing in year 11 it will not be possible for that to happen going forwards. If they want to enrol to do the qualification, they'll have to do all of the um, assessments at the end of the course together. So all of the assessments from 2014 onwards will have to take place in the summer, in the summer of the year of the uh, examination. OK. Uh, a doesn't actually apply to any language GCSEs. This uh, really refers to subjects such as science where there may be double awards. So, so we can ignore uh, the reference to A. In terms of B, uh, this really just reiterates the message from earlier that controlled assessment marks, where there are controlled assessments, can be carried forward if the centre and if the student wishes. However, you may well find that uh, some students uh, wish to improve on the marks that they receive for their controlled assessment units, so it's not uh, compulsory for them to carry forward their results. They have the facility to resit all four units. OK, we'll look at the next slide. Again, I'm sure that we're all very familiar um, with the government uh, league tables, the, the headline indicators. Uh, now, these, this is in fact the, the final giant generic slide, and we'll soon be moving on to, to language specific slides, but it's very important because uh, you will see that a language GCSE, so Arabic, Greek, Japanese or Russian will still contribute uh, to the headline indicators that contribute to the 5 plus A star to C GCSEs that include English and maths. So no change there. Uh, hopefully you'll find this presentation is, is very much a message of reassurance and of minimal change. The next 
bullet uh, simply states that all qualifications, regardless of size, will count as the equivalent of one GCSE. So the GCSEs in Arabic, Greek, Japanese and Russian will remain, as you would expect, as one full GCSE. The short course GCSEs will of course not be the equivalent of one GCSE, they will be a half GCSE and may not count in the league tables. Vocation and academic qualifications will of course continue to be recognised and new Edexcel certificates will also be included in these measures. Just for your general reference, new Edexcel certificates have been recently off-qual accredited uh, in Chinese, uh, French, German and Spanish. Now these new certificates offer a 100% um, final examination format similar to the GCSEs that we have in, in, in these four languages. Uh, they do not include any controlled assessments and very much mirror uh, the uh, format of the existing Edexcel international GCSEs. Now EBAC, the English Baccalaureate, I'm sure that you are well aware of this. In fact, speaking to lots of, of language teachers, it's really clear that the EBAC has helped to raise the, stand, the status and standing of GCSEs, uh, uh, GCSE languages in many schools. And, um, you know, I think that the, this uh, raised status is, is clearly a useful and positive message for languages. So as you will see within the EBAC, uh, students will need to get a grade C or above um, uh, at GCSE or an accredited certificate in English, Maths, History or Geography, two sciences and of course an ancient or modern foreign language and clearly that can include any of these four languages Arabic, Greek, Japanese or Russian. So no change there. So I think that's uh, encouraging. Okay, so uh, we now move on to uh, new at a glance uh, slides that I've put together. Uh, these, are, these are no longer generic, these are language specific and hopefully uh, these should very much confirm much of the information I've already provided and, and indeed consolidate on, on that information. Okay, um, talking to, to teachers, particularly to teachers of, of these four languages, it's really very evident um, that these changes are going to have quite um, limited impact on, on most teaching uh, because many of you are already choosing to enter your students at the end of their GCSE course uh, because many of you believe that that gives them greater opportunity to develop their language skills and progress um, in the language over two or three years or whatever the, the duration of the GCSE course may be. Okay, just to uh, again reiterate some of the key messages, these changes will affect students who take examinations in summer 2014 and onwards. Um, so basically your students cannot uh, or you cannot submit individual units prior to 2014 if they are starting a two-year course from September 2012 or if they've started a three-year course uh, of GCSE um, language learning from September 11. A linear approach to assessment uh, will be um, par for the course really and affect all examinations and ensure that all examinations are taken at the end of the course. But I think for many of you this is really simply a case of no change. No individual unit resets. That's probably one of the key changes. Uh, if somebody does want to reset, if maybe you have a candidate and they do really well in three units, but maybe one of the, the skill areas they don't do as well as they'd expected. Maybe the, the listening 
isn't as good as they'd hoped for. Uh, currently, they can reset the listening individually. Going forwards, from after 2014, they will have to reset the whole qualification. So they will have to reset all four units. You will, I'm sure, be aware of the existence of short course GCSEs uh, in Arabic, Greek, uh, Japanese and Russian. These are essentially uh, GCSE short courses in oral communication, which is a combination of listening and speaking units, or GCSE um, short courses uh, in written communication, which again is a combination of two units, those two units being reading and writing. Now currently, your students can combine those two short courses to form a full course, and that seems very logical. However, with the new linear changes, it won't be possible to combine two short courses to form a full course. Uh, that flexibility will, will be removed. Uh, so basically anyone wanting a full course GCSE in Arabic, in Greek, uh, Russian or Japanese will have to, to be entered for all four units in one go. OK, let's have a look at the next slide. Hopefully this is a message of reassurance, but it's also anticipated that there'll be, there'll be a lot of continuous conti continuity for you and your students. Many language teachers uh, already enter candidates for examinations at the end of the course and it's envisaged that this will be the same um, for, for you. There will be no changes to the content no changes to the weightings or indeed the assessment criteria or assessment modes. Uh, there isn't going to be no sort of drastic revisions to the, the specifications. You will see that there will be an updated specification put on the website, but essentially the only modifications really relate uh, to the linear um, modifications, the fact that they have to do all of the units at the end um, and so forth. Remember that the uh, agenda for the changes from the Department for Education is really focused uh, on the when rather than the how and the what. OK, and just to reiterate the message that the uh, spelling, punctuation and grammar, the SPAG changes only affect English language and the language GCSEs are of course exempt from that. OK, I've jotted down uh, just three uh, frequently asked questions here, some F FAQs that have cropped up over the last uh, couple of months or so. Uh, so let's have a look at, look at those and some of the answers. If students have sat the modular in a modular way, or in a unitized way, um, in 2013, will there be a reset opportunity for them? Well, 2013 uh, will in fact be the last reset, um, oh, sorry, will be the last um, modular examination. There will be no modular or unitized examinations after that time scale. So anyone who wants to reset uh, after 2013 will have to do the whole qualification. So again, in that, if there's a scenario of somebody wanting to repeat one unit because they didn't do as well as they'd expected, that will not be an option for them after summer 2013. They, if they want to reset the qualification, they would have to do all four units. How do these uh, changes affect students in year nine who started a three-year course from September 2011? Well, quite simply, the answer to that is that uh, they will have to go down the linear route. 
uh, there will be no opportunities for individual uh, unit um, taking. Uh, they'll have to do all of the four units uh, at the end of their GCSE program because that will um, lead them to summer 2014. Okay, how will the reforms affect GCSEs in other languages? I know that, that many teachers of Arabic, uh, Greek, um, Japanese and Russian actually teach more than one language and we have put on sp specific uh, training sessions in other languages uh, and you've got a, a hint of some of those changes in the earlier generic slides. Uh, you will see that, for example, controlled assessments are still a key feature um, of the um, of the GCSEs that we offer in French, German, Spanish, Chinese, uh, Italian, and Urdu. Okay, so that's the FAQs. As promised, you can see that I have put together a languages specific uh, off qual timeline. Uh, basically the, the pink boxes refer to the current specification and the green boxes relate to the uh, 2012 linear specification. So you can see um, that September 2011 has got um, two uh, little boxes attached to it. If we look at the pink box, you'll see that September 2011, that's your probably your existing year 11 students, um, they will be the last cohort to go through doing a unitized or modular GCSE. If you've got students who started in September 2011 on a three-year course, they fall into the green box and they will take their GCSE in 2014 and therefore will have to adhere to the uh, linear format. Okay, looking again at the pink boxes, you can see there at the top we've got final GCSE uh, language uh, exam series for modular assessment will be 2013 and as reiterated earlier um, that will be the final um, modular or unitized opportunity the final uh, modular unitized exam anyone wanting to resit after then will have to do the full uh, GCSE qualification in 2014 in 2000 in June 2014. Okay, so I think that that's quite clear. Um, obviously, you can refer back to that a little bit later as you wish. Okay, we're we're very keen to support you every step of the way uh, with the changes. Hopefully, um, you will feel reassured uh, that the changes are are quite minimal uh, but there is a lot of support that's available to you um, excuse my mugshot but obviously the subject advisor team is actually here to support you we have a dedicated telephone number that you can see on this slide and there's also a dedicated email address uh, we also have um, a dedicated, uh, dedicated experts in these languages. Uh, so that's uh, Arabic, Japanese, Greek, um, and Russian. And uh, our uh, expert team are only too happy to contact you with any assessment related queries that you may have. Uh, so it's just a matter of, of looking for the Ask the Expert links on the Edexcel website. Um, we'll be keeping you informed uh, at your centres. Uh, various colleagues across the company will be contacting senior management teams and giving them regular updates as to what's going on with the um, GCSE 2012 linear reforms. Uh, most of the qualifications have gone through to Ofqual and a lot of them have now been accredited and so we're not expecting any, any more dramatic change. 
Do, however, uh, keep an eye on the Edexcel website. It's worth going on to our Languages subject page, and you may well be aware already that you can sign up to useful uh, newsletters that I send out. I usually send out about um, two newsletters uh, a month. Uh, that relate to language specific issues and within those uh, updates I include frequently asked questions and also refer to to other articles and information that are on the languages subject page. Some of these articles have written by myself, some have been put together by examiners or other key stakeholders in the, on the languages scene. There's also useful information about what's on. Uh, there's also a very useful community. It's an opportunity for you to get together maybe with other um, teachers of your language uh, across the country. Uh, so do have a look uh, at uh, the Languages subject page. Don't forget to go on to the website and have a look at the GCSE specific uh, language pages so obviously go on to GCSE Arabic homepage go on to the GCSE Greek Russian um, and Japanese home pages because there's lots of notices that are put on there you've got access to the specifications sample materials past papers and so forth all in one convenient place so so it is well worth getting familiar with our website there is a lot of material that's there to support you okay um, another slide you may be pleased to know that this is the last slide um, and I'm going to give you, uh, rather than go through every single bullet, um, I think you'll find that this slide gives you a brief uh, overview, it gives you a recap of what I, I've, of the messages that I've been conveying. Um, it very much summarises the reforms and outlines the impact that they may well have on your teaching. Uh, what I'd like to do is, is just to give you a few minutes to have a look at these um, and then um, to give you the opportunity to type in any questions that you have if you haven't already submitted any questions and uh, that will give me um, a little bit of time to, to start having a look at these as they come through. Uh, so don't go away, I'm going to be looking at your questions in a few minutes. Uh, obviously I'm looking for, for queries that relate specifically uh, to the GCSE 2012 reforms and how they affect uh, linear provision. So I look forward to seeing your, your queries in a few minutes. So um, if you just give me a, a little bit of time, I'll get back to you uh, in due course. So thank you very much for your uh, patience and attention. I hope you found the session so far uh, useful. But let me... Uh, start having a look at your questions. Thank you.